It's all over the place. Okay, so hey, it looks like we're live now. Thanks a lot, producer in the background. All right, so uh, welcome. This is the Russian Roots panel. Uh, I'm Jay Baraz. I'm moderating this stuff. Uh, this is the, uh, the Russian evolution of uh, lit RPG. We're going to talk about uh, how Russian lit RPG is different from Korean and American lit RPG. Uh, what is popular now and what will be popular in the future of Russian lit RPG. What is real RPG, a term I haven't heard before. And what is the critical distinction from lit RPG? Uh, and why is space lit RPG unpopular in Russia? And I'm going to introduce our guys here. Uh, we've got uh, Vasily Mahanenko. Uh, I probably butchered your, butchered your name there. And we got uh, Dan Sugrelinov uh, along with his uh, son, Kenny. So, uh, Vasily, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Give us a little bit about yourself what's, and what you got going on. Hello, everyone. I am Vasily Mahanenka, and I'm the author of lead RPG series like The Way of the Shaman, the Galactagon series, the Invasion series, uh, and uh, the many others, Alchemic series. And I hope uh, I am the author of future fant fantasy series without lead RPG. Uh, hi guys, my name is Dan Subralinov. Yeah, you can call me Dan or Danny. It's, uh, I'm used to, but my full name is Daniel. If you don't know, uh, this is my son Kenny. Uh, I asked him to help me because his English is much better than mine. So if I couldn't understand Jay or any of your questions, uh, I guess Kenny will help me. I can use you. <laughs> Ah, also, yeah, I'm an author of Level Up series, uh, this Guardian series, and World 99. Okay, awesome. Well, thank, thanks for joining us, guys. It's great to have you on the panel. Uh, so, first question that uh, I, I know Geneva wanted us to ask this one. Uh, what is real RPG, and how, how is it different from uh, normal, regular lit RPG? Well, uh, mm. A real RPG. You see, uh, first of all, I have to say about lit RPG, what does it mean? Uh, Ten years ago, in Russia, started, uh, all, no, all Russians, no, some Russian authors started to write uh, lit RPG or fantasy with a count, with a numbers. Uh, there, there wasn't uh, such a term like lead RPG. It was created in two years later, in uh, 2014. And uh, first of all, the authors was writing by fantasy with numbers. But then uh, the big Russian publisher, Exmo, decided to create a book series and uh, they found some authors who play who wrote a book with numbers and uh, they create the term which uh, they called lit rpg and lit rpg is uh, the name of the series uh, that it was uh, in russia so um, uh, this word was very uh, interesting, and uh, some Russian readers uh, was like it. And all uh, books where fantasy or science fiction was with numbers, they started to call it lead RPG. It's first time. Uh, second, that uh, uh, some years ago in Russia started new theme like. Uh, a real life with numbers. For example, when we s wake up and suddenly we s see, or we saw, no, we see some numbers. And uh, it's not w about game, it's about real life. So this term, uh, real RPG, uh, was uh, created in Russia, and uh, it's very diff different between lead RPG, where there is a... Uh, his escape. <laughs> where there is a game, and where it, it is a uh, real life. And in uh, <laughs> a real RPG, only real life. 
perhaps like this. So the real RPG, it's like a, the system comes to the real world. It's like a, uh, it's all about neural interface, like wet war that comes to one guy or in, in the whole world to all humankind and uh, it changes the way of life and uh, uh, comes with numbers, st stats, you know, profiles. And uh, I guess I was first who wrote the novel in real RPG without any zombies or um, apocalypses. So this is a difference. Uh, lit RPG or game lit, it's more about games and the real RPG happens in real world. Okay. So that's definitely a good distinction on that. And it, in Russia, it's very popular right now. Not lit RPG because uh, there our readers uh, don't want such a book, but uh, real RPG is very popular. So in Russia, they've kind of moved beyond the fantasy sci-fi lit, lit RPG and moved to real world RPG. Yeah. The, re the real RPG stuff. Okay, that's that's pretty neat. I mean, this, and also shows, we shows have Cosmo lit RPG, uh, Cosmo RPG. Mm -hmm. But uh, space, space RPG, yes, yeah. space RPG. <laughs> uh, I, I, I get Cosmo RPG. I understand. Um, yeah, space RPG is what most people over here in America would probably call that. Would probably call that kind of genre. Um, so is that is is space RPG your Cosmo RPG uh, popular in Russia or or not so much? I'm afraid no. But I can uh, uh, change my mind, but I think that uh, space lit RPG is not popular in Russia because uh, because uh, people who like uh, uh, you see in Russia uh, author who wrote who who's writing not who wrote <laughs> um, who wrote lit RPG or uh, other. RPG series, uh, they use only electronic books, not paper books. And uh, those readers who like uh, space uh, and science fiction and uh, other very um, serious books, they wanted to get a book, a paper book. So it's a very... Uh, um, different uh, categories those who want uh, those who like space they also like uh, paper and those who likes uh, fantasy they also like electronics that's uh, that's made uh, space not popular space rpg not popular uh, in russia Daniel. You yeah, can. yeah give, give me a word. Cheap, you know, cheap. Uh, I, I guess a lot, a lot of uh, people who watch now our live stream, they know who is uh, Mikhail Atamanov, or you can say Michael Atamanov. He's the only one. Yeah, he, he wrote, uh, and he's still writing a great, great series. It's like Space RPG, it calls uh, Reality Vendors. And uh, I don't know about like textbooks, but audio versions of this series, it's uh, uh, every day, if you look on uh, Litres platform, it's like the greatest, biggest uh, book books platform in Russia. You'll see re uh, reality vendors on the first places in uh, science fiction tops. Okay. Atamanov is the only one, but uh, except him, there is no authors in Russia who can say that his uh, space RPG is very popular and uh, very uh, yeah, important I, for our. You're right. Not as in, not as in the United States where there are a lot of space lit RPGs. Yeah, there's quite, there's quite a few more. Uh, Science fiction or space RPG lit RPGs here in the U.S., uh, but yeah, they, I, I personally I see I see to see more of the fantasy based 
or even the ap apocalypse uh, lit RPG su subgenre as well. But not not as not as much uh, space. Yeah. You know, I, I have one explanation for this. In Soviet Union, uh, we didn't have fantasy. Uh, the first fantasy book that we read was Tolkien, right? Mm. And uh, but we, we had a lot of space books, uh, science fiction space books from Russian authors, from uh, United States, from Great Britain, like translated books, Isaac Asimov and uh, Robert Shackley and uh, uh, a lot of more. So we, we, I, I guess we was eager to fantasy worlds like with orcs and elves and magic and maybe no Daniel. you speak about authors who the famous in the whole world and their books are published in russia published in russia in paper not electronic and readers who likes um, Sci-fi fantasy, uh, space fa fantasy, or, or sci-fi, not fantasy, sci-fi, yeah. science and, fiction, uh, sci-fi, science fiction. Yeah, who likes science fiction? They like books. They like paper books. Uh, mo modern uh, people, uh, youngest people, from ages from fifteen to twenty-five. They prepare, or oh, not prepare, they prefer uh, their electronic books. And they <laughs> sometimes they even did, don't know about Isaac Asimov, Roger Zelazny, and others famous authors. They, not only uh, science fiction, they also don't know the name like Robert Jordan, uh, uh, George Martin, all of them know because of the Game of Thrones, but uh, except uh, Tolkien and George Martin, they even don't know the authors of famous fantasy series, not only uh, science fiction, but fantasy also. I guess you're talking about TikTok generation. <laughs> 15 till 25 and they prefer electronics books and we uh, i i uh, go away from uh, paper books uh, seven years ago i haven't uh, paper books right now i only in electronic i have only electronic books yeah I, i'm a bit old school myself with the with paper i i love having a paper book but i've moved pretty much exclusively to electronics everything's on my phone and my kindle uh I'm on my tablet now yeah. um the question here um Vasily, uh dan as well um you mentioned i guess you mentioned before in a different panel um it's hard with inter, uh, intellectual property in russia how hard is it to get compensated it's been yet it's impossible uh ты говорил, что ты борешься с пират, а, что ты упоминал пиратство в России и насколько тяжело быть компенсированным за это. In Russia it's impossible because uh, you see uh, Russian uh, Russians very like to read. Uh, they are famous about reading, but they uh, have a lot not uh, such money to buy books or electronic books and so they steal it really uh, the many percent uh, i think that more than 50 percent our readers are people without money who steal from pirate sites uh, they don't Five. steal. They even don't re the, uh, don't realize that the, they are stealing. Uh, you know, in Russia, the average income less than ten thousand per year, and uh, with this amount of no. money, you, you just can't afford to buy electronic version. No, no, no. The 
go to pirate sites and they understand that they steal in this book really someone uh, sometimes uh, some readers came to private chat with Arthur and say i read your book in such site i think that your book is bad say why you did uh, did it why you read my book here because i think that it's what the... man i i don't like pirates either i don't like pirates no yeah, but uh, i kind of understand some of people who want to read but don't have enough mm. yeah it's it's hard sometimes with stuff like that i mean you you, you want you want your entertainment your escape uh, ability to get into place um uh, uh, so you you have you have you have to do what you have to do to get your book sometimes and if you can't afford it then yeah unfortunately sometimes you do have to go and hit those pirate sites to get them but yeah it's always be always best to support the authors and 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 pay and pay for the works that you like and get them going on for you uh so geneva's asking here um, are audiobooks popular for you guys in russia uh you see uh one more uh one thing i have to say about uh, pirates in russia uh three year no three two years ago i decided to translate one uh, three books from england or from uh, england to russian i uh, uh, make a contract with uh, Shemer Kuznets, uh, Tau Won, and uh, Kasima Ya. Well, I uh, took, took three series and translated it into Russia. <laughs> and I, it was a very surprised that in uh, independent sites in Russia, there were free translation of our uh, readers who steal it from uh, England, translate it to Russia, and they even took money from uh, for the this book because uh, they say we give you uh, some interesting texts, and uh, I uh, have to uh, talk with the uh, administrator of this site and to uh, ask him uh, to stop selling uh, this book because I have uh, the right uh, from uh, authors uh, to translate for translation into Russia. Okay. So, so now, now going back, uh, what about audiobooks? Do people like the audiobooks in Russia uh, or do they prefer the, the written? I believe for audiobooks going to be very popular because based on my experience, uh, I have almost the same income from audiobooks like from the textbooks. Audiobooks is the future of books, I think, but uh, it uh, will be changed. Uh, now uh, it uh, was it's created by narrators. Yes, it's a. Uh, it's about narrators. Narrators, narrators, narrators. But yeah, and in uh, in a future, I think that after five years, it will be uh, audio books which will create by system without human. Do you think eventually, eventually it's going to move into it's all just going to be digital voices with no, yeah. no, no, no human narrators? You see, in, in Russia, there is a company uh, like Google, it's called Yandex, and they started to create uh, their system to for audiobooks. They uh, make a contract with LitNet for some uh, mechanics, and they uh, t worked together for to make voices for electronic books mm -hmm. and it's uh, happened right now and i think that uh, for this project they used uh, five or 
or six years, and after this, they create some program which uh, will uh, create a voice for electronic books without narrators. Okay. And perhaps it will be uh, like a voice uh, theater. I don't know how it's called in English. Uh, Synthesizer, uh, I think, is what you're looking for. No, uh, uh, Pieza. Uh, звуковая пьеса, когда много человек говорит. Audio pieza. Audio play. Uh -huh. Doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, so uh, Facebook user asking here, uh, why are Russian lit RPG books so different from the U.S., specifically the storylines? Now, unfortunately, I've come I've come a little bit late into the game for lit RPG, so I haven't read a lot of everything yet. Uh, most of what I've read is U.S. stuff. But, what, I mean, if you guys can tell us what kind of differences there are in the storyline there. So. Uh, no, Kenny, wa Kenny wants to tell us about that one. You see? Um, well, Russia... In uh, German literature, the main idea is uh, the enemies must to suffer. In uh, American literature, the main idea that uh, they all have to suffer. In Russian literature, the main idea that the main character have to suffer or the author have to suffer. Okay. So, uh, right. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Dan. Man, something, yeah. Well, you know, uh, it's because of mentality. We have different mindsets with uh, with the rest of the world, almost all the world. Because, you know, Westerners, they, uh, they're more like going to success. That means money and family, but it, it is like single play. You know, Russians, uh, especially who was born in Soviet Union, like me or Vasily, we, we think more about like team play. And uh, this is one difference. I, I don't speak about Asian way, like Chinese way or Korean way, because it's different culture and different mentality. But what I'm saying is like explanation why the storylines are distinguished. Can you okay. say something? Well, I've read like a lot of English books and some of the Russian books. And what I, I was thinking that like I feel like the dialogue it can be it can be much shorter and there can be a lot more things happening around for English RPGs. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. All right, so um, we'll cycle back on this question popped up here. Um, I'm going to cycle back to that one in just a second. Um, so now you mentioned a little, uh, we've talked a little bit before about the audio books, um, especially. Uh, so uh, Kyle here asked, uh, so do you think that um, most foreign lit RPG authors will start depending yeah, on that? Sorry, I, uh, oh. it's some sorry. Uh, terrible noise. Uh, can you repeat? I yeah, sorry. Need an so we were talking before uh, a few minutes ago about the computer generated voices. Um, do you think that most foreign lit RPG authors will start depending on that kind of a system for their to do audio books? Hmm. Now, when they're saying foreign, I think I think Kyle here is meaning not U.S. authors. Yeah, I don't think that. It will happen and it will be I don't think it because the most important thing uh, is uh, the quality of translation, uh, not uh, making audio book. So when we will come to the time when translation will be like Google Translate, but with much more quality, I, I guess it, it it's going to change the world and uh, it, it's going to change the in one moment like this every man could have access to whole literature from foreign offers and it's going to be something amazing i guess 
and I have no more words about it. All right, no, no problem. All right, uh, now another question came up. Uh, what games really kicked off, started uh, Russian? Kick off? Game? What does it mean? Uh, start, started, started the genre, created, create the genre. World, World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. Um, Lineage 2 and uh, if online, I guess. No, the only game is World of Warcraft, <laughs> and uh, it's the only one. And uh, after this, uh, the hub spoil, uh, the Pass of Exile. What? I, I, I have to agree with you about World of Warcraft. It's it, it's the number one. That's actually where I met my wife. So. <laughs> yeah. As for me, also I like. Uh, Fallout series, you know, Diablo and uh, Souls-like games like Demon Souls and uh, mm -hmm. Dark Souls. So, uh, you know, when I write, I use different elements from different games to make my own game mechanics and world mechanics. Okay. No, I only I played only World of Warcraft for ten years and. Vasily, no you know, I played World of Warcraft. I spent 12 years of my life in World of Warcraft. 12? I'm and only 10 only years. Only 10, okay? My confu is better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, your confu is not better than yours. I'm uh, also was like professional gamer in World of Warcraft. I've got first skill three times in our server, not in, in Russia, but uh, on sev server. I've got first skill. Wow. Better, I, better, never, better than I was. <laughs> I, I was number one by, <laughs> by, by world progress, you know, not number one in the world. I was in 10 of shaman in the world. Not the only one, but in 10 of... Yes, so, Kenny. What's up, Kenny? Talk, I like, man. I like um, adrenaline games more rather than grinding. What kind of games? Like adrenaline games where it requires fast thinking and reflexes. Oh, okay. okay. So those are pretty like 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 what kind of games? Um. Don't say it. No, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I allow him to play like 18 plus games and he's talking about shooters, you know, like Overwatch, oh, okay. Fortnite. Fortnite and Overwatch are like that. <laughs> I have a child. He's uh, five years old and he plays uh, the uh, GTA, Grand Thief, uh, GTA. Uh, he's just Grand right there, no healing, right? Yeah, Thief. Oh, I don't remember how it's described. Guitar, how it's Grand Thief Auto. Grand Theft Auto. Okay. Oh, Grand, Grand Thief Auto, and he play. He's only five years old, and he likes to play Grand Thief Auto. And, and, and he's probably better than you are at it. <laughs> and I'm happy that he uh, this uh, game in English, and uh, my child. Uh, don't understand what they shout every uh, second. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. <laughs> <laughs> because they sh shout in every five seconds. Yeah, Ken, Ken, Kenny knows what he's what, what, what it is. So. <laughs> okay, so let's go switch off a little bit here. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Facebook user asking, uh, classical Russian literature tends to be, to me, a lot more philosophical and internal. Do you think that has helped Russian lit RPG be more character driven than American lit RPG? Oh, for sure, of course, because of Dostoevsky, you know, we read him in uh, elementary school. <laughs> no, our readers tied from philosophical and uh, very strong books. They want some uh, fantasy, uh, some fantasy, some discuss fairy tales. Uh, uh, without any uh, psychological problem. Okay. And uh, so for now, they only wanted the fairy tale. 
fairy tale for women it's a uh, lovers uh, series and fairy tale for uh, boys it's a lit rpg in russia that makes a lot of sense all right i'm going to kick over to one of the questions we got on discord yesterday let's see um take me a second to read this uh let's see uh, Vasilier Dan, I am curious how the cultural translation of the lit RPG, real RPG, has challenged or modified your approach to writing in each of these genres. Uh, do you find your general writing style or approach to character development has changed over time as your audience has expanded to reach non-Russian speaking people? You see, it all depends from translator. If you uh, can believe your transla translator, uh, you used him and uh, you gave him all uh, abilities to, to, for translation. And uh, the only one person who depends how my books... <laughs> uh, Oh, my cat broke I, I think the boss is getting mad at you there. <laughs> oh, and the only one person who decided how my books will be uh, meeting by uh, English reading is my translator. Not me, not uh, the author. He can... Uh, you know, uh, uh, such a Russian famous also like Lev Tolstoy. Leo. And his uh, famous uh, book, The War and Peace. It's more than two tomes, two big, huge tom tomes. And uh, some years ago, some ten years ago, it uh, started to translate into Japan. And translator decided not to translate all of books, uh, all of texts, because he decided that it's uh, too strange for Japan people and from two huge books he translated only the main part and it's uh, transform ah transform and it's transformed like a shorter uh, novel and uh, people who live in Japan uh, thought that mm, Russian left Tolstoy is a famous. Why they called him famous writer as he wrote such uh, short novels. Novel, and also it's for my books. I wrote it in Russian, and I can't uh, read in English, unfortunately. And uh, I also can't uh, understand, uh, is it uh, translator, translation is good or bad? Uh, I have to believe my translator. And also my readers who read my uh, book and say, it's not a book because of... And <laughs> there is some mistakes here. Okay. But I've got a good translator, and I hope it's uh, that my books it's uh, the same in Russia and <laughs> in English. Well, I think there's definitely always going to be some translation differences here. Um, in fact, that's what I was going to bring up next. In fact, uh, so this one came off of the Discord as well. It says, uh, I have read a great deal of Russian game lit and lit RPG and have kind of developed a scale based on the quality of translation. So that's kind of what you're talking about right there. I would be interested to know about the process. I imagine most books are edited in the original language prior to publication, then translated, then edited again for content and translation quality. Um, with today's digital publications uh, via Amazon and in independence like Royal Road, and they'd love to know of others if, if you guys know any, because I don't. Um, has there been a drop in quality with the democratization of publication ability? Daniel, it's your time. 
Okay. That's correct. The process is like a question. When I finish the book, uh, it's going to be edited by in Russian. And after translation, it's going to be edited with an English version or German. Doesn't matter. So the, the process is the same. The, the problem is in, in the time, in the deadlines that my publisher have has. And I guess in, in our time, we just don't have privilege to have a lot of time to make like an ideal book, the book of, of, of writer's dream, you know, and uh, uh, almost all Peter G books are long series, uh, like minimum two free books, and uh, you have to follow time in, and uh, you just don't have enough time to make to check translation quality and okay uh, I can read my book in English and check if the uh, translator made mistakes or not but our Russian offers they just don't have this uh, kind of skill to check it so And the man who asked this, this question, he is probably right about like scaling all translated books by quality of translation. You see, my first books uh, it can uh, include uh, including many uh, special Russian things, and when I decided to translate it into uh, English, uh, my uh, <clears throat> agent asked me to cut off all of Russian special things uh, and it was a very hard work for me for the first book and after this when I decided to go to uh, w the whole world I started to write books without any uh, special things and uh, now I wrote uh, the international book books which uh, can read all of uh, readers without uh, additional uh, cultural um, references you know? yep additional cultural references thank you daniel uh, what about me you know when i realized that uh, uh, i'm not writing for the russian russian speaking people i'm writing for the whole world uh, I decided to be like more human than ever because, you know, because of differences in culture and in mentality, you know, fat shaming here in the United States, it's, it's like bad, bad thing. But in Russia, when, when you call fat, fat guy, like you're fat, it's, uh, it's okay. It's, it, it. It could be between friends and in, in the family, the parents could say to their children that, hey, guy, you, you, you need more smoke, you need more sport and you should eat less. And it's OK. And the same thing about, like, you know, uh, L LGBT jokes in Russia. And it's it's like deep in culture and uh, we need more time to uh, remove these ugly things from mentality. <clears throat> yeah, so they're, they're definitely going from genre to genre. There's definitely going to be some hard, pro there's been some translation problems with different cultural references, um, different levels of humor, and whatnot, which you can do because I mean, there's definitely stuff that you guys can say in Russia that wouldn't fly here <laughs> and would and probably vice versa as well so but uh let's see um did you have something else wanted to add to there you like you wanted to talk no okay. uh so let's see here um do you find the ability to publish to be generally the same country to country or are there some that are more amenable 
or at least knowledgeable to a degree about your genre. Then hmm. yeah, I didn't understand the question. Yeah, me, me too. Uh, do we have this question in our private chat? Yeah, this came out of the private chat. Um, it came up off the Discord yesterday. So it doesn't. It's kind of kind of odd sounding to me as well, and it's in English. <laughs> uh, so I think the thing uh, is it is the is, is your ability to publish your books the same depending on what country you want to uh, release them in the U.S. versus Russia or England or Germany, Korea, wherever. Hmm. Is, is, is it is it harder to do it in some countries to release or? Uh, you know, me and me and Vasily, we have one uh, one agent, and uh, it 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 is problem. We are lucky guy. We have an agent who took our books and uh, to published it on Amazon. And uh, as for me, I even don't know how to do this. Yeah, me too. We just give Russian text, Russian book to the Magic Dome, and they translate and do all, all the work for us. All the oh, okay. Because the author have to write. And uh, it's also in Russia, they also have not only to write, but here have also to communicate with the readers to. Oh, reclama. Mark uh, advertise. Huh? to advertise his I'm book. Old. Yeah, but uh, I believe it's everywhere. It's not. Everywhere. <laughs> I India, don't know. India offers had to be like um, uh, a lot of things in one, not only to write, but to promote and uh, to communicate and to build a website and make an email. Uh, a, a lot of work. Okay. okay so now let's talk uh, so let's talk about the future of lit rpg real rpg um uh, what do you guys want or think the future is going to look like for the Ru for the russian lit rpg real rpg genres well as i said uh, the first it was lit rpg now it's real rpg and i it's me no. You can uh, put the button mute. I don't see. Oh. oh, there it goes. It, it's very. Oh, nice. Well. Um, <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> ah. So. Uh, well. So. Uh, first of all, it was uh, lit RPG in Russia. After this, it was uh, real RPG in Russia. And I hope it will, uh, in Russia, now new trend, new genre. And uh, I even don't know how it's uh, translate. In Russia, it's called Bayar Anime. Um, <laughs> Bayar Anime. Uh, what does it mean by uh, anime? It's about clans, uh, <laughs> about families, about uh, some kind of um, uh, Japan mafia uh, in uh, one place, uh, different uh, clans who tries to communicate between and who tries to kill them all not only uh, his clan and so in russia uh, the most popular is uh, bayar anime and i hope my new series like uh, uh, the bear clan it's something like about, but uh, I cut off all numbers and created from it the fantasy story. But I think that in my future series, uh, it will be uh, by anime with uh, numbers. 
and in some kind of uh, fantasy with uh, clans. Okay, so it's kind of more moving from an individual uh, protagonist, main character, to group, family clans. Yes, family clans, family groups, uh, and to grow together. Okay. All right, so in, uh, that is popular in Russia right now. Uh, lit RPG and other RPG uh, people tied about our readers tied about RPG. They wanted uh, some something else, and now Bayar anime. Bayar anime. Imagine House of Starks and House of Lannisters and House of Atreides and Harkonnens. And the yeah. protagonist, he's going in one of the weakest family. And he's uh, and, and it's like the start of his journey in fighting with all that houses and making diplomacy and relationships. And that's and all of this with numbers sometimes. So it's kind of lit RPG still, but in real life. And uh, actually, uh, usually it happens in alternative reality, not our Earth. Okay. So, so tell me a little more about uh, what uh, your, your guys' books. Just give us, just give us some more, just give us some rundown of what of what your books are, of, of, of your of your stories. Yeah. Um, so, so, so that we can kind of get an idea about more what. Russian lit RPG books are versus, and I know I know they've been translated into English at this point, and everybody has them. But some, like I said, like myself, I I have not read your guys' stuff yet. Yet, <laughs> I will get to. I have a list about long as my arm. But yeah, just let, let, let give us some give us some info on your books. Talk talk about them for a few minutes. See see uh, what's what what are they about and what's going on. I can say about Discardium. From Daniel Sugradinov. It's a very interesting book uh, where 16 years old uh, child, not teenager, going into uh, the game because uh, of his, uh, his parents situation in the family. Well, I like it very, it's serious, Disgardium, and I uh, think that you have to read it. Well, Level up series. It's a real good series from Daniel Sukralinov, and uh, I think it's uh, some kind of real RPG uh, series, first real RPG in Russia, and uh, the, the main famous uh, a real RPG in Russia, and uh, all our readers li like it, really. I I'm also like it, too. <laughs> well, what about me? Daniel will say. <laughs> oh, you know, Vas Vasily has a lot of different series, but he was that one who, who I read first. His way of Shaman is like a classic of genre, and... Uh, uh, I reread this series like uh, I, I don't want to lie, but maybe ten times because just because of emotions that his series gives give me gave me, and because the main hero hero, and just because when you start reading next installment of series, you just have to reread previous books to make it fresh in your memory. And the uh, way of shaman is it, it's like an epic story about the guy who was uh, in prison, and uh, it's like a near future when uh, uh, in, uh, inmates goes in virtual reality to to mine mine ore, right? And uh, uh, Mahan, Mahan is the main hero's name. He found a way to move out of that sandbox with mines and uh, uh, found, he, he has found his own clan and uh, 
there are a lot of intrigues and uh, betrayals in these books and uh, and i like it and uh, what i like most of it is when he, so the main hero hero he began crafting uh crafting jewelry uh, and uh so i'm not gonna spoil here but if you haven't read his books just try from way of shaman and you you will be you know when you go to radio to the RPG community uh, and every day i see that question guys i need recommendations what what i, what I should read and you will find at, at, at least one comment about uh, read way of shaman so i guess vasily mahanenko and dmitry rus and uh De mikhailov three authors from russia who founded this genre liter pg okay all right um dan this was for you um so will you be returning to the restart series yeah of course uh because it's my like favorite series but uh i think no, not everybody knows that uh, my Discardium series and the Level Up series happens in one universe. It's just different timeline. And uh, I'm not going to start Level Up 4 before I finish my Discardium series because the ending of Discardium will be like the beginning of Level Up 4. Okay. I think Dan's camera is locking up on him over there. <laughs> okay, um, another question got to uh, come up uh, from uh, for you, uh, Vasily. Um, says I've seen you do the historical European martial arts uh, HEMA at a tournament. Um, do you think this revival of the medieval arts affects your writing? No, it wasn't historical. Yeah material arts. Uh, it was uh, me and Dmitry Rus, two Russian authors who create uh, lead RPG in Russia. And we go to one our community, uh, uh, book community, and we uh, um, found people who really tried to beat each other with sword and uh, we, we said let's try to do it between us so i took the sword the first time in my life and also dmitry rus uh, took uh, this was the first time in his life and we started to create some <laughs> uh, yeah, it was like a ah, sandbox. Yeah. Quite and and we started to create some joke movement <laughs> movements. So uh, it was, so it wasn't really a, a historical martial arts. You you guys were just messing around, having some fun, and goofing off with it. That's... <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty good. I like I like that. Um, I never uh, tried to uh, historical uh, <laughs> material art. <laughs> no. You should try. No, no, no. I like gymnastic. I'm gymnast. But I guess okay. it's because. So this one come up here. Uh, does anyone know if D. Russ is still publishing more books? Uh, he started the sci-fi series and never continued several years ago. I have no idea who this is. Uh, yes, he continued to write his uh, books. So now he write in the tenth books of uh, his series, but he's uh, those guy who created uh, the reader platform in Russia, one of uh, reader platform. And uh, he changed his uh, mind, and now he's uh, an owner of one of uh, reader platforms. Uh, Dmitry Rus, he has uh, he has never 
continued his previous like space liturgy books, but he started new zombie one. It's like zombie real RPG. Have you read it, Vasily? No. No. No, it's about. I like, even like, the, don't know about it. <laughs> it's 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 kind of zombie kids teenagers little RPG and uh, it's kind of bloody. You, know, you don't want to read it, believe me. Oh, really? Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's all what we know about meteors. Sorry. Yeah, it's de definitely, definitely a lot of different different uh, subgenres in the lit RPG, real RPG uh, books these days. I mean, I've seen some stuff that I started looking at it, and I sure didn't want to touch it. So, sounds like without, so like those wouldn't, wouldn't be up my alley. Um, but what what kind of stories do you guys prefer? Got just a couple more minutes here. Uh, I prefer dark fantasy, like you know, Abercrombie, George Martin, and a lot of authors. Uh, I don't read liter PG now because I'm kind of exhausted and tired of it, but I, I read about it's kind of woman. About, right here, but, but I read a lot of books Shame about like, stock stocks and uh, bonds and the market because, because we don't have we didn't have it in Russia and Kazakhstan, so when I'm in the United States, I should learn about it more. It's it's more like about finance finance books. Okay. What about you? I prefer what? female fantasy. I like it. I like the fairy tale. <laughs> I think there's a little bit different between uh, female fantasy in Russia versus female fantasy in uh, the U.S. And we're not going to talk about that one today, though. <laughs> I don't know what uh, female fantasy in uh, America, but in Russia, female fantasy is a uh, fantasy where every uh, page has uh, some kisses between uh, she and him because between her and him and she decided i'm not such like such this and um, <laughs> so actually, it sounds a lot similar to the ones you get out here too i really <laughs> wanted to write a book like this but uh i'm afraid that my readers killed me <laughs> well, <no. laughs> romance yep romance but I oh, really want to write to, to write a romance. Oh, so this this has been pretty good. And it's like uh, Kenny and the dog took off. So, <laughs> are you ago. tied, Jay? Huh? Are you tied? Tied. Tied. Mm, tied. Ustal. Ustal. Shall I'm wait for tired. a second? Tired. Are you tired. Tired? No, no, I'm not tired. I I actually just got up a little while ago. Tired. So I just haven't had any. I haven't had any coffee yet. So that's why I keep yawning. <laughs> By the way, Jake, uh, what about you? Are you author? No, I'm not an author. I love to read. I'll I'll do a little bit of editing for people when they need me to. But the one time I tried to write a book, I put it away for a while. It was it was a sci-fi. Uh, this is way back thirty years ago. And then a few years later, when I started getting into uh, Japanese anime, I discovered that the book I was writing was the exact plot line to an anime. So I kind of stopped at that point. Um, I do, uh, Geneva just made a good point here for me. I actually do write uh, stories for um, the, for RPG games. Uh, we got the, uh, an RPG based on the land that we do. Um, and I, 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 write the, I write some of the modules for that. Um, but we're about uh, out of time here today, though. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming in. We got uh, Dan Sug Sugralinov and uh, Vasily uh, Mahaninko uh, coming in with us today on the Russian Roots panel. Um, Next this... year, if it will be possible, uh, I will use translators and uh, put here some. You don't need also, you didn't. Huh? Yeah. You don't need translator. Yep. Just... No, I'm not. Uh, I need translator, but there are also a lot of authors in Russia who can't speak uh, even like me. 
uh, I speak that, but uh, they speak nothing. And uh, there are a lot of authors in, Rus in Russia who translated their book uh, for okay. Amazon and who wants to meet with uh, their okay. readers in uh, America, but they can't. Well uh, so I don't mean to cut you off, but we are out of time now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and kill it right now. Um, I just want to give you guys that are looking for the giveaway, uh, for, for the uh, giveaways that we're doing, your code words for this panel is group on. The code words group on. And if you guys want to continue talking about this subject, there are uh, Russian roots and real RPG, everything. Uh, you can hit us hit us on the Discord and the After Party channel and uh, just keep keep the talk going, guys. It's been great. I want to thank, thank both of our uh, panelists coming in for today, and we'll see you guys on the next time. See you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Jay, thank you.